In the 1880s, Frederick Winslow Taylor walked into one of Midvale Steel's factories in Pennsylvania armed with a stopwatch. That day, he began timing his men, performing each task down to the tenth of a second. He was seeking the one best way. Two decades later, one year before the outbreak of worldwide war and one year after the sinking of the unsinkable ship, he published his most influential work, The Principles of Scientific Management. From the moment you step into line at Starbucks to the moment you receive your product should take no longer than three minutes. Anything more, and you are entitled to free service. I learned this when I worked there. They knew me as partner 1269789, but I secretly called myself Johnny. Not too long after Taylor's work for Midvale, the clock became our overseer, the one true measure of our work's value, taking us into its steady hands and taught us a new rhythm of reproduction, the crafting of every single day into the same steady beat. Our best minds came to see us in a new light, fluorescent and neon and ghostly pale, as they gave voice to a newly conceived human being, the imperfect machine. Machines understand the one best way. Tell them to perform a certain task a certain way and they will, always faster, always more precisely than a human being. Humans think too much and get distracted. Humans are troubled by emotions unrelated to their work. Humans break down and are difficult to fix. Machines are much simpler. Machines can fix themselves if so programmed or be replaced as needed. Machines are easy to love and trust. Humans are imperfect machines. The workers of Midvale hated Taylor. Accustomed to doing their work in their own way at their own time, they saw that working too fast would cost them jobs. The factory owners saw that jobs would cost them money, and so Taylor assured them that anyone who chose steelwork as a profession was phlegmatic and unintelligent, but their uneducated ears pierced the glowing rhetoric of his Harvard tongue and heard the words he would not say, you are imperfect machines. I hit the syrup pump twice, press the automatic shot, and then the automatic steam. I type one, two, six, nine, seven, eight, nine onto the screen so the clock knows when I'm at work. For two years, I served coffee to my fellow imperfect machines as we shared in golden dreams of artificial intelligence, marveling as our best minds wrestled with the elusive equation for the logarithm of the soul. We wanted the machine that could fix our broken hearts. We wanted the perfect logic of its emotion, having forgotten that every time a child is born, its parents, those beautiful scientists, have given birth to a little intelligent machine. A human being, inconsistent, emotional, but more than the sum of its mathematics. And so while Taylor walked to work with his watch to watch his men work, I walked to work without mine because I didn't want to stay chained to that line. I got a little drunk the day Starbucks told me I was no longer 1, 2, 6, 9, 7, 8, 9, and said, I never was! <laughs> And then I broke down and cried and told myself that if someday I hold in my arms a little intelligent machine, I will call them by name and never number. And when scientists try to manage them, I will show them the best ways to tell them that machines are imperfect human beings. Woo!